Federal Reserve is kicking off its two-day meeting today in Washington, with the group expected to cut rates for a second time this year tomorrow. Let's bring in Krishna Guha, Vice Chairman at Evercore ISI, and Sarah Bloom-Raskin, former Federal Reserve Governor and former Deputy Treasury Secretary. Sarah, is this the type of thing that would get discussed at the meeting today? Um, the repo rate, yeah, for yes. sure. Uh, that is going to get looked at because, as you pointed out, Sarah, um, wholesale funding market liquidity is really something that uh, did rear its head uh, during the financial crisis. Um, it, there's a question, really, of liquidity uncertainty that this bounce up uh, actually reflects. Now, I, I agree that technical factors could be at play, but as as you know, um, you know that rate has really hovered uh, quite low, um, really only moving within hundredths of a uh, of a percentage point uh, now and then. So to see this kind of upward pressure, yes, this is something uh, that the New York Fed obviously has its eye on, but yes, the FOMC will, will be looking at it as well. So, so, Sarah, what are you implying there, that there is something more concerning underneath that we perhaps haven't yet uncovered or, or discussed that might have led to this spike? No, um, I don't want to um, uh, uh, indicate any kind of crisis underway, but I would uh, probe those technical reasons. I mean, our system, our wholesale funding repo markets should be capable of being able to, for example, have an IRS tax payment that, that, that's due or the end of a Treasury auction. These were all some of the factors that, you know, have been said to be at play. And I would think our, our markets should be, our wholesale funding markets should be a little bit more robust. So I keep our eye on this. Can I Krishna, jump in on this, this one of, as well, guys? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, just to say, um, I very much agree with what Sarah is saying. Uh, yes, there are technical factors here, but we need to look uh, at the deeper question. Why is this system suddenly turned out to be not resilient? to, you know, a tax shift, a settlement. It strikes me there are a couple of things going on here. First of all, that the Fed may have lowered the amount of reserves in the system quite far enough, possibly even too far, but also that we may need to put some uh, backstops in place, maybe a repo facility, so we automatically supply liquidity back into the market when you hit one of these, uh, you know, constellations of factors that squeeze that liquidity in the market. I think that the Fed's going to have to take some medium-term solutions here, not just the one-day market operation fix, start drawing the balance sheet again so that the reserve supply on a secular basis starts to move back up rather than still moving down, and then also reform the operational structure of how they put liquidity into the market to make sure this doesn't happen on a regular basis. But, but Krishna, growing the balance sheet again, that's not a like-for-like -like solution for the repo rate spiking, is it? Well, the underlying question here is, do we have enough reserves in the system, right? So on the day today, the Fed can throw a whole bunch of reserves in, as they did through this open market operation. And they can also, as I suggested, uh, put in place a kind of standing facility that would inject reserves uh, when you came into moments of stress. But the path for the balance sheet essentially determines the underlying trajectory for the level, the baseline level of reserves. And it makes little sense to me to be injecting reserves with your left hand and still draining them with your right. So you're talking about QE, expansion of balance sheet. No, I'm not back. talking about QE. What I'm saying is that the Fed balance sheet in pre-crisis times uh, grew naturally. It, it gradually it knew with, grew with natural growth in their liabilities, including cash, including other liabilities like the Treasury's bank account at the Fed and also reserves. What I'm saying is I think the time has come to resume that natural growth again. You know, you, you've got this, Sarah, and then you've got an economy which is still looking pretty healthy. And in fact, the latest evidence is actually that manufacturing has rebounded in August, industrial production up 0.6 percent. So what does the Fed do with sort of some of these worrisome signals that it's getting, but at the same time, a pretty decent underlying growth mode? Right. So the Fed um, obviously is going to keep its eye on the long term, on its dual mandate, on both what the health of the labor market looks like, as well as what price stability is looking like. And you're right, Sarah, the other piece that I think is looking better is um, the inflation rate. Uh, the inflation rate that the Fed likes to keep its eye on is moving, inching up ever so slowly closer to 2%, which is the, which is the number that the Fed 
likes to hit. I think that that also is uh, is looking good. And you're going to hear um, really in tomorrow's decision. Um, you're, we're going to see the extent to which the some of these indicators could be doing different things since the last uh, since the last meeting. And of course, we still have with us the possibility of two, if not more, dissents coming.